Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here on the third and final day of our workshop. Um, let's give just a couple of more minutes for everyone to join and then we can formally start. All right, I guess everyone is inside. Um, wanted to participate at least. Um, so let's start our final day. And before I start, Today, I um, just wanted to make sure uh, that everyone can hear me. There are no voice issues. All right, fair enough. So, just today, as we all know, that we had some issues with um, connectivity. There was a problem at Zoom's end that we couldn't do anything about. And we had to complete the rest of the day in Google Handouts. And that was a bit patchy and some people couldn't actually join. And people who were inside um, Hangouts and you know, sometimes they had some problems. Um, so I thought, you know, I should give a brief recap before we jump into EndNote X9 and learn to do the literature review from within your citations manager. Um, so we'll look into some of the questions that you guys have been posting in WhatsApp group. And if someone else has um, any questions, um, I can address that, but um, be sure to keep it brief so that we can cover our course contents today. Um, and I think um, Dr. Rabia has some installation issues at EndNote. Um, Rabia, have you been able to successfully install that? Okay, so is it installed now? Well, there's generally not much difference except for some um, specific options. So yeah, you can choose either one, uh, but for now you can go with typical. All right, so meanwhile you installed that, let's cover some of the um, issues that we had with and we will yesterday. So one of the questions that you guys had was about um, the queries and how do we create the wizard inside um, the project. So let me go ahead and actually address some of the questions about that. Can everyone see the screen? All right, fair enough. Let me fire up the file to show you how can we create queries within the files. And it's rather straightforward um, endeavor in which you could um, either use a wizard to create a query um, in a certain file, or you could simply open the file and within the file, you can create a query. I also told you that you can save your queries um, as standard searches. And those standard searches can be repeated on all files. So for example, if you have different files within the project, you can go ahead and use the same query with all files to make sure that your search strategy is the same. So if you look at this file, so now we have the book open that we use to code coming apart. So what you can do is that, that within um, the file, um, you see this option, query the PDF. So on top, you can select this option. And it is going to give you different options. First one is the word frequency query that I told you, um, you can see how 
frequently words appear in that specific file. And so it will automatically create a list of um, top 1,000, 50, 150, whatever words you wanted to search for you. And it's going to create a query for that. So these are one of the most used uh, queries. So that's why NVIVO gives you an option right away in the beginning to use um, these queries as a start for any um, file that you have within the project. Now, the second is the text search query. So if you want to search specific words or phrases within the PDF, uh, you can select this uh, query and then you can find out your relevant uh, information within the PDF. For example, that is very helpful if you are doing um, certain analysis with certain keywords. Uh, so for example, if you're looking to do a thematic analysis to find out what themes are present in a certain resource, you can select this query and it's going to show you how many times the word or the phrase appears within um, a certain file. Then you also can search based on already created nodes or codes and same can be done with the cases. So there are multiple options that you can create within uh, the queries. Now, when you select one of them, it's going to open this query window and that's the standard interface for the NVIVO window in which it's going to give you this search box first. Um, here you can search for the term or the word that you're looking for. Then I give you a brief overview of how strictly or how loosely you want your search terms to be matched in the text in your PDF file. So for example, if you're searching for word talk and you want it to be exactly the word talk and any other variations of that which should not be included. So you select exact match. So if you want um, the word talk with all its nuances, um, all its uh, verbal form. So this is the uh, present continuous form of that. Talking, you want it to be a part of that. So it could be talked, it could be um, anything else that includes the word talk. So you can select by pressing the button and it's going to also search with stemmed words. Um, you also want to select the files or folders you want to search that in. Uh, and from here, you can actually choose multiple files that you would be able to search. And then once you are done, you know, you can run query and uh, you can also run and save results. So once you have run the, the query, it would be down here on the left side in query results um, and in queries. And you can run in multiple times on multiple files. So that um, is the brief uh, explanation of um, how we use queries. Now there are multiple ways of running queries and finding it. Um, and when you're going to play more with it, you will find different options. But basically this is how you um, run queries and you look for specific content that you're looking for based on your research. Now, another question um, that was asked was about the attributes. So what exactly are the attributes? Attributes, just like in vernacular English, is used to explain different characteristics of a certain uh, place, thing, human being, or anything that defines something. So for example, if you are talking about an athlete, being fast is one of the attribute of that. Being tall could be one of attributes of that. Anything that explains a certain person in this example will be an attribute of that person. When we talk about attributes in NVO, we are basically talking about the characteristic of certain class or certain case that defines that class or case. So if you take a, a practical example of that, so you can go to file classifications. We studied about file 
classifications um, yesterday when we talked about um, how you can classify your information. For example, if you are uh, you have some literature files in your project, and some of them happen to be books. Like in my example, this is a book coming apart. Um, and in file classifications, you might want to classify that as a book. So when you're looking in your file classification, you know how many different kinds of uh, sources you have. So uh, you could have audios, you could have videos, you could have books, research papers, SPSS files. So you can have anything. Now, once you have the file classification, uh, you right click on them and then you add a new attribute. So for example, let's see what attributes do we have at the moment. So if we open that, and I can tell you one nifty tool that you can use to actually um, change the structure of the displayed information. For example, now you see this is the vertical format in which you can see if you pre press the transpose button, it's going to actually make it horizontal. So if you press trans transpose, you can see you know it makes it a row instead of a column. So if you want it back as a column, you can press transpose. So once you have transposed that, so now we see we have different attributes. So every book has an author, every book has a year of publishing, every book has a title, and so on and so forth with series editor series title and place published publisher volume and things like that now what if a book does not have a built-in attribute that we want to add to that so let's say if we want we are searching we're doing a systematic review on books that um, happen to be in certain period of um, let's say the, spe the, the specific genre, for example, romanticism or enlightenment um, books or a specific era. So that's something that has to do with literature and that will, won't probably be in the default attribute list uh, present in NVivo. So what if we want to add that, the era of literature? So what are we going to do is we're gonna go back to file classification going to right click and add a new attribute that's going to be the stop option and we, when we click that it's going to ask us to name our new attribute and we're going to call it era of literature and for you to remember uh, yourself what, what that was so you can probably write um, romanticism etc that's going to give you an idea that you know what inputs you would like to add in that certain field so you press ok there and now you if you scroll down you'll see there's a new attribute here with the name era of literature and then you can assign its values here you know um, or you can make it not not applicable but that's one way of adding attributes that are not already present in nviewer so that was all about um, the attribute, how you add that. And the same thing you can also do with cases. So you have a classification for persons and organizations. So as a person, if you open that, we have uh, different classifications with the name, sex, age group, occupation, country, email address, and things like that. Now, for example, if you wanted to add another attribute um, with address, you would simply right click, add the new attribute, and write the name for um, the address, and then press OK. So we'll be start seeing the address option here, which you can later populate for every person within that case. So that was um, some of the explanation of um, the questions um, that you asked in the WhatsApp group. So if there's no other question, we can um, head over to EndNote and start our literature review using EndNote.
All right, so we're good to go. Now let's start with the EndNote one. Everyone can see the EndNote screen. And by the way, feel free to ask any questions if you don't understand. And you can also um, ask if you cannot see the screen or if you cannot hear the voice um, so that you know we work these things out before we actually you know, go ahead. All right, fair enough. So that's uh, EndNote. I hope that everyone has installed uh, software on your systems. Um, it's the latest version, I believe, EndNote X9. Um, and this is how the interface looks like when you're going to open that. Um, I have already populated some of the fields within this interface, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, your EndNote might look a little bit different than mine because you know I don't know if you haven't populated anything in that and if you haven't worked that, so it would look a little bit cleaner than mine. Uh, mine is a little bit cluttered, but let's go ahead and tell you how you would actually do that. Now remember, this is not the tutorial for the software EndNote. I, I don't think that you would have any problem saving your projects in NVIVO. So you can simply add the files, code them, create cases and classifications and relationships and queries and maps. And you can easily save that. And the location where you actually save your files, and you would have those files. Now, one of the pro tips based on my years of experience working with that, I can tell you is um, always create reports for your NVivo projects. So if there's something that happens um, to your system or there's a bug or anything, at least you have the word file or report in front of you so that you can actually use it for thematic analysis or you can reference it when you've been asked about your project. So always make backups and always create reports and share it with other people um, that you're working with or back it up in your external hard drive. As someone with a lot of um, literature and important data, you always should have an external hard drive that you can save things into. So um, do that. Uh, saving the project itself in trial version is not a problem. So you can save it. And I've told you already the trick with NVivo, how you can actually use it even after trial. So use that. Um, and everything should be fine. And you would won't be losing any data after trial also. So your projects are still going to be there. So anyways, um, back to EndNote. So what I was telling is that if, when you have this interface in front of you, um, this is how it looks like. And this is not a tutorial of the software EndNote itself because you don't have time for that. Um, this is why you might have noticed that I have everything loaded already in that. So I'm practically actually using this library to work um, on different projects. Some of them are my, my doctoral courses from, from the past. Um, and then um, I also have my master's thesis bibliography in that. That was a long time ago. I don't even remember, it's at least 10, 10 years ago. And then we also have um, some freelance work that I do online. So all of those references are already loaded in that. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is that how do we actually use um, this information in the literature review that we're going to be doing. Now, uh, before we actually learn about that, um, let me tell you how we import our references within that briefly because I believe some people don't know how do we import uh, references from the databases online within the EndNote. So for them, uh, let me go and show you Web of Science, which is the most used and reliable um, scientific database. Let me share the screen here.
Um, yes, Atma, I think you have not created a library yet. So what you can do is um, you can go to file and create new library. And it should look like that. If not, that's not a problem. Um, just share your screen and we're going to work on that. For right now, let's have a look at the Web of Science interface. Can everyone see that? All right, so Web of Science is the database, scientific database for the most uh, valid scientific journals and uh, papers. You can almost find everything that's been published there, um, apart from a few that's not been indexed. And the company um, that runs um, this, um, these whole services is called Clarivate, Clarivate Analytics, and they've recently purchased out of science, I believe it's a couple of years now. Um, the software EndNote itself has been created by the same company, and they have some other um, options like Journal Citations Report and Essential Science Indicators. Copernio is a add-on for uh, Chrome that can actually help you log in into Web of Science. Um, and um, download the full PDFs on different pages. So uh, what you do is that uh, once you search for a term on Web of Science, uh, so if you're looking for some papers, let's actually first show you uh, Google Scholar, uh, which is by far the most known one um, so that it's easy for people to relate and then I can come back to Web of Science also. So you go to Google Scholar and you can search for any paper, let's say about academic performance. And then you're going to have a list of the papers um, that you can read or if you like them the abstract um, you can download them within your endnote how you do that is that you go below uh, the citation that you want to import and you click on these inverted commas and uh, which says site if you hover your mouse over that it's going to say site and then you press that and you will have this window pop up in front of you once it's there and just press endnote and make sure that your EndNote software is running. And it's going to ask you to save the citation somewhere. So you're gonna go ahead and save your citations in any folder where you want it to be saved. I already have one saved. So if I save it, it's going to ask me to replace it, which will happily do. And once it's saved, all you have to do that is, is to simply go to that folder and open that file. Once you do that, it's going to load up in your EndNote. And right now you see it's under the imported references. And you can drag it into any of the already made groups that you have created. I'll shortly uh, tell you how to create groups, but you know, you can organize your references based on um, the type it, um, it has. Now, uh, the same thing you can do in Web of Science uh, where you have different uh, papers. So if I were to go ahead and open a paper, and by the way, um, in six minutes, the meeting is going to be um, over also, so I'll be sending you the new link in WhatsApp. So um, when you open the paper in Web of Science, it's gonna show you the information about it, journal name, volume, pages, abstract, keywords, author information and everything else. And it's also going to show you the papers um, that are cited by this paper. 
So you know the bibliography in the end. Uh, one of the good parts with Web of Science is that it takes all those papers in bibliography and not only list that, some of the papers that are fine in Web of Science, you can go ahead and read those papers within Web of Science and you can download the PDF version also. So all of these papers, so if you want to go to, you know, this paper, characterizing learning environments cap capable of nurturing generic capabilities in higher education, you can simply go ahead and read that paper also. So if you want to import that paper in EndNote, um, there's a button on top, it's called export. Yes, there's an option um, um, in JSTOR and Academia also, but basically Academia is kind of a social network for academics where they upload their papers um, and you know authors do it themselves. But all the papers already present in Academia and JSTOR are going to be available in search of Web of Science and JSTOR also, most probably. So that's not going to be a problem uh, if you want to search for same papers um, both in Academia or in Web of Science. Uh, one of the most emerging, uh, fastest emerging network for uh, researchers and um, scientists is um, ResearchGate. So ResearchGate is somewhere uh, people actually upload their uh, manuscripts, uh, full versions and preprints. And uh, there you can actually follow other people, relevant scientists and download their papers and read their preprints. So that's one place where you can do that also. Um, and it's going to actually show you the number of reads um, in your papers. For example, if I were to show you my research data account briefly, um, also in Google Scholar, you can have your own profile also. So if you were to look at my Google Scholar profile, you simply go to profiles. And and you can you know, see different papers and books that are um, written and you can find that. Um, so this is how the research kit looks. Um, so this is my profile with the, within the research kit, my research interests, things like this. Um, and it would also make you, uh, show you your number of reads, how many reads your papers have accumulated over time. That's my research lab uh, with uh, different people and research items and things like this. So that's um, an emerging social network for scientists. You can use that also. Now, uh, back to uh, Web of Science, if you want to export the paper, you can use export button here and you can print EndNote desktop and it's going to import the paper uh, within your desktop. So you can have choice between author and title source import or the full record and cited references also. And then you can you know, simply export and it's going to um, export your reference within the EndNote. And the good part with um, that is that, you know, you can select multiple options also, um, like multiple papers and it's going to download for you. So now that we know about um, citation, let's um, head back to our EndNote. And uh, once you have imported all citations, this is how it's going to look like. So if you select any of the citations, it, you can always edit that by going into left bottom pane, where you can see the year, title, journal, volume, issues, and every other details. So one of the good practices um, that I recommend to my students is always paste keywords and abstract of papers within the their EndNote citation window, because um, if you will have at some point articles over 100 or 50 um, and way too much to remember, this is going to remind you what this paper was about. And this is one of the best strategies also to create the literature review file. Now, I believe I've already shared the literature review file with you um, on WhatsApp. Um, this is this Excel file 
in which you can actually create your manual literature review using EndNote uh, where you have all the citations. And um, do you all see the file? And we're about to end the meeting also. All right, perfect. So let's uh, you know, restart the meeting and I'll show you how do we populate this. All right, so um, you know, your research should be based on what you're actually looking for, but um, this is a general overview of the kind of template that you can use for the literature review in your paper um, or your thesis. So what basically happens is that um, you want to have certain fields about all the papers that you're reviewing. Um, I mean, the first field here you can see is the file name. I mean, you might not need that um, because that's going to show you the name of the file with which you have actually saved that on your computer. But if you want to skip that, that's understandable. Fields that you, um, want to have for sure our author and the name of the author for the paper and the year. If you want to create a separate field for a year, you can do, do that also. Um, I recommend creating a separate field for a year because if you do that, then you can filter the results based on the latest studies and the oldest studies. And you can also have the article title and address issues within the paper. Um, you can all, always have a look on the problem statement within that paper that has been proposed. Um, the methodological philosophy of the paper, is it a quantitative study, is it a qualitative study, or it's a mixed method study, um, and then what research method is used. Um, in case of this particular paper, it used the Pearson R correlation, and um, the findings of the study, the results, um, that is also listed under the column and your personal remarks can always be listed also. So that's a general um, template for literature review um, that I give my students, um, which they can follow and create their own, or they can use the exact same one and start making literature review. So now this row actually represents one paper and you can create um, a row for all the papers that you are going to be studying. And then you can, you know, once it's populated, you can filter the results. How you do that in Excel is that, and there is a field called sort and filter. So you can, you know, press filter, and then you can see this small drop down, down facing arrow in the corner. And then you can you know, sort your papers by name um, you know, based on different attributes. For example, if we had um, a column with year, so what you could do is that you can select a certain year and you could see how many papers were published in your literature review within that year. And then you, know, you can review uh, other attributes of that paper like their title and problem statement, research methodology and things like that. So I believe I already shared that, but if there's anyone who does not have the paper, uh, sorry, the template, let me know and I'll share that again uh, with you. And there are numerous other templates available online also, so you can do a simple Google search for liter literature review Excel templates, and then you will find one of similar uh, templates and you can use it on your own. Alternatively, uh, alternatively, you can create your own also from the scratch, or you can modify um, one of these templates also. So now back to EndNote and how to actually use that uh, for the literature review. Once you have this populated, uh, before I actually go to that, I just briefly would like to ask uh, Fatma, have you been able to create the library? Because if not, um, you go to file, and you create new and then you know you can name your library here whatever name you want to give it and then you can save it into a location where all your research is 
So now all your um, files, subsequent references will be saved in that library. Okay, so I mean, if you want me to give you the host privileges, I can do that and you can share your screen and I can guide you or you can see my screen and I can tell you how to do that. All you have to do is open the EndNote, go to file and create new. Do you want to share the screen? And I've already unmuted you so you can speak also. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, actually, the host no issue for me. I'll share my screen with you. Sure, I'll make you the host. All right, you can share the screen now. Okay, so just a second. Let's go to file, create new, just um, name your library and you know, choose where you want to save it. This way it's creating the library. Oh, there you go. So you have your library now. Now it looks a little bit similar to mine. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Now I can understand how can I can import my files from there. Yeah, I'd be more thankful if you could return the host privileges also. <laughs> <laughs> how is that possible? Do you select the... Um, uh, make host and you have to make me the host again. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. So now I'm back to our end note. Everyone can see the screen. All right, perfect. So now that you have learned how to import the references in um, EndNote and how it's going to look like, let me briefly tell, tell you the um, how you can actually so sort your papers with relevant information. So uh, you see, I have sorted that in a way in which I could see the attachments of the files um, first in first column and then a record number so let's say in this freelancing folder i have 23 and then everything has record number for total i have 169 so these start from 151 to 178 so you can have this column or not that's on you but you know i have created this one so that i have an idea how many i have total and which number that is so then second column, I have the author, the year, the title. So what you can do is, you know, you can modify um, these options based on your own choice. Um, if you go to, I think this option was in, and that's for the search. So here, uh, the display fields, if you go to, let me show you again, you go to edit, and then you go to preferences. And here in display fields, you see the name of the columns. So I have file attachments here. The second column is record number. And then I've got author, year, 
So you can select based on different options. For example, in column nine, if I want to select something else, I can do that, you know, based on the publisher, um, rating, and edition, anything that you want, and then it is going to populate for you. So, you know, you can change um, around with that. You can play with other options like um, spell check and sorting, reference types, and things like that. Now, one important thing that I want to tell you about referencing is that, um, that when you import a reference from Google Scholar or Web of Science, uh, you have to make sure that you have the right reference type or style that you want to use in your paper. For social sciences, we use the American Psychological Association reference style, and that's the sixth version of that. How you do that is that you can um, select the reference style in the menu here, which is, um, you go to the output style here in edit, and then you can select the reference types. The more common reference styles are already listed here, like Chicago or IEEE, that's for um, IT and computer science related and engineering related style. Uh, Vancouver and Turabian Night uh, footnote. And if you cannot find the reference style that you have been asked to do, what you can do is you can simply go to Open Style Manager here. And then there are different um, types of um, reference, say, reference styles that you can use depending on which category that is. For example, in dentistry, um, we use the European Journal of Oral Science. Um, you can select that and that's going to sort your reference um, citations um, in the dentistry related uh, format or the format that journal, European Journal of Oral Sciences accept. So you'll find your own field and you know, most of the time when you're going to submit your paper in a journal, um, they will always have um, instructions for the authors. So that's not gonna be a problem. You're going to find your um, style uh, relatively easier. So back to the uh, window. Now, Yes, Fatma, all the styles, um, you can find them within the uh, window. So if you go ahead and select I hope it's inside that. So yes, so we, the, here we have the Harvard style. That's the multidisciplinary style. So you can select that and it's automatically going to convert your references to that new style. So it, it's it's seamless, you know, you don't have to do anything uh, for that. So this is always nice to use a, a citations manager instead of doing that manually. Uh, so before we actually go ahead and uh, let me tell you how to, you know, export it uh, for the literature U format. Let's actually go ahead and uh, have a quick quiz session so that um, I can see that you guys are ready for um, the literature review. So do we have a volunteer who could actually share their screen and uh, tell me how to import the references from Google Scholars within EndNote and use the right citation style for that? So now everyone is hiding as if, you know, have asked you to share your blood with anyone else. Uh, Rabia, you want to try? Okay, that's not a problem, you know, just share your screen and I'll tell you how to do that. Just open Google Scholar. I'm going to make you the host and unmute you also. So if you have any questions, you can ask.
and you can unmute yourself also. You are the host now. Sure. Um, I think your your video is on, but um, your screen sharing is not, so you have to um, share your screen. So you have to minimize the EndNote and go to your browser, the Chrome browser where you open websites. And you can open um, Google Scholar here. And you can write any paper that you're, or your research topic so that we can find some papers on that. Okay, so now, um, yes, you have to go to site and then EndNote and press a button, the downloaded file. So there you go. So now you have imported the reference with. Um, so how do we add those files which we already have in our uh, folder? Okay, for that you have to import the files. Um, one way to do that is go to file, import, select the file where that is. Um, you have select the folder and I'll press OK. Yes, sir. And uh, you can also, all right. Uh, sir, with the dentistry, it was lit lit written uh, Kerry's research. So uh, should it, does it mean that it's just related to the carious tooth or it can involve anything related to dentistry like the implants or anything, the, uh, uh, the style? Um, that depends on the journal or the, um, the style that your supervisor tells you to use. For example, if you want to use a certain um, output style, uh, you have to ask uh, the journal which referencing style they recommend for example i know for a fact that in medicine you know mostly they use when you when cooler sure so what you have to do yeah. is that once you have downloaded all the um, papers in endnote and you have the citations you go on top um you have already vancouver selected on top you can see that yeah so yeah. you know you can select that and then when you're going to insert that in your word file it's automatically going to do the in text citations on top within the text and then at the end it's going to create the bibliography automatically so that's not a problem at all okay so the referencing style does matter in a research paper a lot of course in, in publication the, yes yes so you always have to make sure that you have followed the right referencing output style um, depending on um, what journal you're writing um, so that, okay. that's that's for sure 
and from journal to journal just does the uh, uh, style change or no it still stays same it's the standard for it, all but the fields it does change but it depends in which field you are for example in social sciences the accepted norm is american psychological association six version um, in uh, engineering and computer sciences it's mostly um, the ieee standard um, and I think it's the same with the medicine with Vancouver style. So it really depends. You have to check every yeah. time that um, you have the right citation style. Do you have a lot of papers? Because it's taking a lot of time to import. Yeah, yeah, I think. Okay. Mm, and sir, there's one more question. For example, my topic is uh, fitting into medicine as well as dentist dentistry. Don't, are so, they the same thing? No, in medicines like uh, in medicine, like it's related to anatomy. There's an anat anatomy portion in it as well as I am relating that an anatomical portion of the medicine related to the dentistry portion that is the implant. So, like there are two fields that are coming together. So, in that case, I'll stick to Vancouver. Um, I won't be able to tell you. I mean, that's the question you might want to ask your supervisor. Um, okay. Because you know he's going to be telling you uh, what format to follow. Uh, I think for in generally um, for the, the at the university level, it doesn't really matter that much um, as much as it um, matters when you're publishing for a paper uh, for in an international journal. That's where it's a mandatory. Uh, but I don't know about your specific university, so that's something you'll have to ask your supervisor. Uh, sir, in our university, they have asked us that we have to, our paper should be at international level for publication. Are you writing a paper or are you writing your thesis? Sir, I'm writing a thesis, but they said that with that, you will be doing the uh, um, publication to international, in the international journal. Uh, okay, that I understand. So yes, you have to you know, do some publications mm -hmm. as part of your um, research work. Um, so what you can do is that mm -hmm. you have to first select the journal that you're going to be publishing. We're actually planning a workshop because this is a very, very common um, question. Um, I'm receiving it like yeah. in, in hordes. So we're planning a workshop in which we're going to be talking about what journals to publish in, um, how to write a research paper, um, different parts um, within the research papers, um, which output style to use. So I'm going to be uh, addressing this question in, in very detailed workshop. Okay. Uh, so we, you know, um, just keep um, keep an eye on um, the dates, and we're going to be okay. uh, doing that after um, Eid, and uh, maybe we can do a Facebook Live for question answer also, where we can do that. Okay, okay thank you, sir. I mean, you can also create one, uh, import one file um, within the library. Should I cancel it? It's almost done. Um, okay, we can wait for a minute. So everyone else, um, do you guys um, understand you know, what's going on? Um, how do you actually import your folders or files uh, within the EndNote and how to actually import it from Google Scholar? Is there anyone who doesn't understand? All right. Um, how many people among participants um, are at the PhD level? I mean, I know two of them are my um, are the ones that I'm supervising. So Fatma is for the PhD. I believe Bhavna is also uh, with PhD. Okay. So now you see that you have all the references yeah. imported within. Um, and the, sir, how do I uh, like paste these into like um, MS Word and Okay, I'm going to how tell you that. So how you do is just um, uh, so select one of the references. Okay. Okay. Once you do that, uh, you go. Um, uh, do you have the word 
plugin installed. Go to your Word, Microsoft Word. Because it doesn't look like that you have that. Because on top, yes, you don't have no, it. Sir. So you I have to have install it. it. And then, you know, you can insert within the Word into the... Okay. 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 So um, thank you so much for sharing the screen. Now thank we have to you, get sir. back. Uh, you have to make me the host. So how do I make you host? Um, you have to take the mouse on my name um, and then make host. All right, thank you so much. All right, guys, I hope that now you understand um, how do we import references um, and then um, how it's sorted, how you can change different um, options in the settings, um, how you can actually select the uh, referencing style. So you can go to this output windows. Um, we'll be using the APA6, so I'll select the APA6. So everything is now sorted in APA6 format. So you see, as soon as I select APA6, um, the references are already formatted in the APA6 format. So this is how it's going to look like in the end. Uh, if you, if I select another uh, format, for example, I'll go with the Vancouver. So now you see it's formatted differently. So you know it's automatic. You have to do nothing except for you know just selecting the output style, and it's going to do it for you. Uh, so now about the literature, you know, there are multiple ways you can do that. And uh, one of the ways to do that, you know, if you want to um, export all of your references uh, to have an overview of that, what you can do is you can go to file and press export. And there are different options for that. You can either have it as a rich text format, HTML and XML, and then you can save it. And once you have the text format, you can simply copy paste from there. So I think I already have that um, exported. So let me go ahead and actually show you how we do that. So this is how my references look like. So once I have the text format, uh, I can simply, you know, simply copy paste here and I copy here and then I can put that in the Excel file here. Uh, let's say I copy paste the author here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it. So now I have this author already there. Okay, just wait a minute. So now we have the Baker Barker C already here, and then we can you know, copy paste um, all others uh, within the um, text files, and we can populate our literature review section. So that's the easiest way to actually um, use um, different uh, papers and export them from EndNote and put that back in the literature file. And at the end, you can you know sort it out with the filters and find out the emerging themes in your um, literature review. Now, uh, with that being said, um, what you can do is there's another way to actually make sense of your citations, uh, which is by making groups. So if you look at the left here, it says my groups. And in groups, um, you can create it. You can right click and create a group here. And when you create a group, you're going to see a new group in the bottom. You can re rename that. And I can call it the demo for a workshop. So now I have a group with zero references in that. Uh, and how you import that is, you know, you simply go to your all references, or let's say I go to the unfiled references that do not belong to any folder. I select one of them and I drag and drop it in the demo for workshop. So when I do that, you see that this folder has been populated with one reference. 
And if I click that, I have this reference within the EndNote. So this is how you make folders and then you populate them. Now, one more question is that um, the EndNote plugin for Word is um, something that you would actually use to add your citations um, in a Word file. So I can show you how it looks like briefly. So when you open a Word file, document files, and if you have the EndNote installed, an uh, EndNote plugin for Word installed um, in your Microsoft Office, you will see this tab on top here. Can you see the screen? Okay, so you see this tab appearing on top, EndNote, and you can actually use that um, and so if you're writing something, for example, uh, let me say that uh, I would say entry barriers to international market are high. And I want to add a citation to that. So what I'm going to do is, there are two ways of doing that. Either I can insert a citations by searching and it's going to give me a pop-up here and I can search the papers within the word in the end note. So I can write entry barrier. And this is the paper that I have that I want to add. And I'll simply select insert. Now with insert, there are different options. You can select insert and display as author and year. You can select the insert and exclude author. So that would only be year. And then there, um, there's an option to insert in bibliography only. So I can select the normal insert. And the good part that you see is that this is the in-text citation and it has already created the bibliography automatically. So that's the benefit of using um, EndNote that you know, it creates not only in-text in citations, it's already going to create the uh, bibliography for you. So now let's, let me tell you how you can actually do that with EndNote. So for example, if you're already in EndNote, you select your paper. It could be anything. And you see the button on top here called insert citations. Uh, you press that button and it's automatically going to take you to the Word file, going to add the citation and it's going to create bibliography for you. So both ways, you can either do it from the end node or you can do it from your Word file. Now, people who do not have the Word plugin for Word, you can download it by searching Microsoft Word plugin EndNote. And you can go to downloads. Yeah, but it has to be here somewhere in downloads. It's pretty easy. You can find it and I can share you the link in WhatsApp group also. Um, so let's go back and actually focus on our EndNote here. Uh, so now that we have that, uh, let me take one more question from Ravi. In, okay, so in your library, um, the abstracts are um, not always attached with the papers. For example, if I open this paper and I go to references and scroll down, you see in this paper, there is no abstract. So what you have to do is that you have to copy paste manually the abstract from the paper and paste it here. Uh, when you do it here, then you'll have abstract. You can always uh, paste the keywords also, and then you will have a complete file. Um, generally, it's a good practice that whenever you have a paper, just attach the PDF file of that paper if you have access to that. 
you know, search wherever that is by clicking that attachment button and then add the PDF file, copy paste your abstract within this abstract box and then you can use them. So this is how you actually uh, you know, export the text version of all your references within the EndNote and then you can take it to your Excel file and then you can make um, a column wise list of attributes that you want to record for every paper. And once you have all your papers, um, I believe most of you would have at least around somewhere between 20 to uh, 50 references depending on your paper and I mean you would have slightly more for your uh, postgraduate and then doctoral degree uh, but generally this is the way you actually do that and then you can see the emerging themes within these uh, literature reviews when you filter it uh, by a certain attribute. Now uh, there is another very frequently asked question that I'm asked uh, when we talk about um, the literature review, which is uh, about the systematic review or the thematic uh, analysis of literature that um, is very common in um, journal papers these days. Uh, so one way of doing that is that uh, if you go to Web, Web of Science, and then you search, or you can go, go to Google Scholar also, and you can do the search. And with a certain keyword or a certain search phrase, um, you can download all the results of that search. And then you can import the paper titles with that in the EndNote. And what you have to do afterward is that you have to use the search queries to modify your searches based on um, the output. So for example, if you're doing a systematic review of uh, papers on, uh, let's say, a blockchain. So I'm going to go and select title here, and then I can use different operators. In, that, in this case, I would use contains blockchain. It's going to give me all the papers that contains blockchain in the title. So this is how I need to narrow down my search and create a systematic review of things. Now this is only first level of um, filter that we, have, we are using for the systematic review. You can add another filter. For example, another a filter could be year that contains 2020. So now that I know I only need papers that contain blockchain and that is published in year 2020, and then I can keep adding more filters also. Now by default, um, if your EndNote shows you the three filters, you can add more by clicking plus button here. So once you press this plus button, you will have one more field. And if you want less, you can press minus, and then you can only have two fields if you want it that way. So now you see that you know systematic review is quite easy also that you um, do the search. Let's say search depression. So now have we have all the papers with depression. Uh, you can also use filters in Web of Science in which you can um, choose highly cited in the field. Um, hot papers are the ones that are being read the most and you know, are, are being cited quite often. You can also look at um, the open access um, papers. Then you can filter your papers with and the publication year and then you can uh, choose different fields and you know there are other filters you can use that so you can also use this option in your systematic review that uh, would be helpful so if i select the highly cited in field and refine it just 
I have a different uh, view of things. Um, you can also create a citations report. So now you see that you know within my filters with highly cited papers on depression, the total publications that we have are 2,609 with the H index of 349 uh, with average citations per item is 193. Um, and there are over 500,000 citations for that. Um, the articles would actually use that is uh, over 300,000. And this is all the matrices um, that you can actually see um, if you create a citations report. And that is something very useful and are used frequently in international quality papers where you can find uh, these um, fancy graphics um, for people who would actually um, need such report um, in systematic reviews and in thematic analysis and things like that. Now, that is basically how you do the systematic review on any topic uh, when it comes to using EndNote with that. Now, at the end, I want to explain some of the features uh, of EndNote that are very powerful and that's going to actually um, help you use it as a power user and not a simple user. Uh, one option in your groups is that if you do the right click, you can also create smart groups that are going to organize your research papers depending on certain rules. So when you create your smart group, you will have this pop-up in front of you in which you can uh, automatically sort paper when you import that in the library by author. So for example, if you want to have a certain author, we can write the name, James Demore. And then now all the papers by James Demore are going to be added in this certain folder with the name new smart group uh, whenever you import them in the EndNote um, working space. You can also refine your um, smart groups with different other attributes like year, keywords, abstract, and other things. And that's going to automatically run rules uh, when you add new papers and it's automatically going to sort your uh, papers within that. Now some of the other options that you can create with that is that you can also create a citation report uh, for your papers and the one that you are cite citing. And um, it's going to be uh, very interactive in the way that you can see that how many um, citations have been used and uh, things like that. But for that, you will have to have a web of science um, access to that. Now in the reference section, uh, everything else is pretty clear. Uh, what you can do is uh, you can add file attachments to different papers. For example, if you download uh, or add a paper to EndNote without the attachments, you can later find the attachments. Um, for example, if there is no attachment in Google Scholar, you can go to ResearchGate and ask, find the profile of that researcher and ask them for the PDF or um, the Word version of their paper. And if they send it to you, you can add it through file attachments and do that. For example, here, if I select this paper and then go to file attachments and attach file, and I can add the file. You can also view the file within the papers. You can also find the full text for missing papers. Um, and you can also find their reference updates through online. Uh, if you have a web of science account, you can also uh, find all the relative um, statistics from their website. You can also sync your libraries um, with your online account and things like this here. But for that, you will have to have an account both for the EndNote um, and the Web of Science, which is the same group essentially. So finally, um, who's going to show me uh, how to create groups and add um, citations in that?
I think Rabia, now that you know how to share the screen and create citations, you want to try again? Sure, I'll make you the host. Make sure you do not end the meeting. <laughs> so there you go. And I've also unmuted you. So you have to right click on the groups. No, 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 that's, you don't have to write anything in the search. Right click on the groups, create a group, name the group. Okay, and now go to your all references. And on left side, you see all references, 73. No, no, no. below that, this, yes, this one. Um, and now, you know, see the papers that are relevant to implant and then add that to that folder by dragging and dropping. Yes, very good. Now, see other papers that are relevant. Um, you can also change your view of the EndNote uh, in horizontal way. Um, what you can do is you can go to, go on top and select window on right and press cascade. So see, now uh, it's in the uh, vertical format, but what you can do is you can also uh, make it uh, horizontal. So go to window and press horizontal. Okay, I think your screen is not changing. Uh, why is that? Just give me a minute, let me tell you the option where you can actually do that. Because how it happens in my screen is that I can see the references on the bottom. So you have the wide version of that. Uh, but I don't know why it's not happening in yours. Anyway, you know, just add the papers um, in the implant folder. Everyone else, please pay close attention to how we do things. You can also select multiple papers by um, pressing control and then selecting all and then you can drag them all together. Yes, like this. All right, um, you can also um, show us how to change the uh, referencing style. If, for example, if I want to reference in APA format, how would you do that? Yes, it's right. You select um, the Vancouver one. No, no, no. Go back and then select APA 6. See, now you have the APA 6. Um, so this is how you change your um, APA formatting. Um, also, if you want to export that, how would you export the references? Exactly. You go to file, you export that and then you can choose your format text file or the RTF or HTML and you can do that also. Now, um, what if you want to um, add a column in your uh, front window? For example, you have authored your title now. Uh, if you want to add something else, what would you do? Go to edit. Edit preferences. And on this, no, no, it's right. Just go to display field and then in, in the bottom you can select, you know, some other option also that's uh, in the different types of things. Very nice, very nice. Thank you so much. Uh, 
And okay, thank you so much. So um, this uh, is how we actually um, use our EndNote for literature review. Uh, I've also explained to you uh, different um, options for how to um, play around with groups um, and smart groups and uh, different referencing styles, how to output that, um, how to export that, um, how to insert that in the Word file, how to create in-text citations and the bibliography. Um, I have one question from the WhatsApp group. Now that we have some time for questioning. All right, welcome back. So one last thing that I was uh, about to mention is um, I had this question um, in the WhatsApp group and you know, many people have asked me how to do that because now that you're collecting data for your workshops, can anyone hear me? All right, perfect. So one question that has been asked um, quite frequently about research now that you have uh, you're collecting your data and you know how to collect data and things like this um, is to how to create online questionnaires uh, for distribution to the participants um, because the other alternative is that you have to manually score all people um, and then you have to enter that in computer and then you have to um, analyze all the information and that takes a lot of time especially if you have a large sample size and if you're doing international research international collaboration where you would have participants from different parts of the world um, then it becomes a huge problem because then you have to do the phone interviews um, or you have to do the written correspondence that becomes a huge problem Um, so I'm going to um, address this question shortly, Fatma. Let me just quickly um, tell people how to actually create questionnaires in Google surveys. Um, so what you do is that you go to Google Documents and you can create a Google form. This is how it looks like. So you can add your questions. So you can first, you know, name your uh, survey form, whatever that is, and you can write the description who you are, um, what university you belong to, the kind of research you're doing, um, any um, informed consent information, uh, privacy and confidentiality um, agreement in ethics and review board instructions, anything that you want to add in description, you can do that. And then you can, um, you know, create different fields so how you create fields is that you know these are pre-made fields, but if you want to add other fields, you can add a question. You can import a set of questions that you have already made, and you can add the title and description. You can add image, videos, and different sections. So for example, if I were to add another question, so this is the way that you add new question, and then you have uh, different options of kind of questions you want to create. You can create a short answer, question you can create a paragraph check boxes drop box um, linear scales so there are different uh, methods that you can use to create questions depending on your research uh, so once you're done with this and then you can also make your questions required and if you were your questions are the similar type you can duplicate the questions also so you don't have to make go to the um, button again here and create new questions from the start. You can simply duplicate and change your questions and their option. And if you want the respondents to uh, respond to that question um, as a mandatory field, you can make it a required field. So when it turns green, that becomes required. And um, this is going to save you a lot of time. Please make your questions required because if you have any missing data in your sample, then it becomes a huge problem when you're running analysis on that. Uh, people uh, who have taken my quantitative analysis workshop, they know that uh, that if your data does not is not um, complete and it has missing values um, or um, there is some problem 
with formatting or anything. Um, with the structure equation modeling, that becomes a huge problem. So you want to make sure that there are no problems with your data. Um, so make sure that you make people answer all the questions. So when you're done, you know, you can uh, do the, you can send it to your respondents by clicking send button. Uh, you can also preview that. You can add other collaborators who can help you on the project. If, for example, if you're working two or three people on a paper or something, uh, you can also preview by pressing the I button on top so that you know how it looks like to your uh, participants. So right now we haven't done anything, but this is how it's going to look like at the end and you'll have submit button. So once you have the submit button, you can also see the responses of people who have respond, uh, responded. So here, when everyone else has responded, you will see the list of all the respondents. And then you can you know, export that file as Excel by clicking that button. You press this button and all the responses will be downloaded as Excel sheet. And then you can run your analysis on that. So that was uh, one thing that I wanted to um, explain to a lot of uh, people who have been asking this question. You can create your questionnaires online. There are other tools like SurveyMonkey and Qualtrics. If you have access to that, you can use that. Some of them are paid, some of them are not, but um, that, you know, that would be very helpful if you can create the online survey and not the paper and pen survey. Now to address your question, Fatma, um, like I said, um, in response to Dr. Rabia's question, we're planning a workshop um, and we have huge demand for that. Um, that in that uh, per, per, uh, specific workshop, we're going to be talking about how to select journals, the ranking of journals, uh, where it's um, actually listed, for example, Scopus um, or JSTOR or Emerald, uh, and PubMed and NIH, um, they're all different names of different um, journals and overarching organizations and where you should actually publish the paper. So we're going to be looking very deep into that. And then I'm going to also show you the journal requirements page. Um, so many of you were asking today that what output style, referencing style we have to use. I'll show you the page, um, the instruction page for authors in every journal in that workshop, in which we'll go into detail about the formatting of your paper, the figure and table style, the annexation, the indices, um, the annexures, um, how do you add your data to that, and what are the requirements of journals, the impact factor, the age index, um, how to write the journal paper. So we're going to be getting deep into the writing portion now. So now that many of the people have taken our um, quantitative uh, workshop and uh, now with this quality workshop also, uh, we can get into the writing part and how to do that. One of the tools that every one of you should have uh, is called Grammarly. I mean, we all are speakers of English as second language. Um, so it's really helpful that we have a tool like that that's going to help you uh, find mistakes in our um, English language. And it corrects a lot of your writing automatically. It has a very smart way of uh, finding the grammatical mistakes as well as your tone and your expert level and your audience level. Um, you can have the premium account, which is the best one. Um, you know, I can help you get one also if you want. Um, we have some reseller accounts. Um, so try to play with the free one and see how it works. And then uh, if you're interested in the premium ones, we can arrange that also. So these are some of the tools that we're going to be talking in that workshop also. Uh, and we also have um, some agreements, reseller agreements for the softwares like NVivo and uh, Smart PLS, for example. Smart PLS 3 costs 220 euros for a complete year. And that means less than 20 euros for every participant if there are 20, uh, 12 members. So you can also create a group in which um, you can access Smart PLS 3 um, and you know uh, share the cost and you can do that also. So there are so many things that we'll be covering in that workshop uh, and that's going to be after Eid. 
so that's something that you would want to join and that's going to be really beneficial for you if you want to do the international publications uh, and um, if you want to you know present in conferences and things like that you know, stay tuned for that um, we're also planning a facebook uh, live session in which i will take your individual questions about your research um, and that's going to be in a couple of weeks also so stay tuned for that it's going to be um, in my facebook group the notification um, i'm going to also announce that in whatsapp group um, and most likely it's going to be on my uh, facebook page where everyone can join for free um, and in which you know i can address your questions yes uh, rabia it will be a very detailed workshop uh, it will be explaining the mechanisms of Google Scholar and uh, Web of Science and other tools uh, for searching papers. And I'm also going to give the overview of academia and research gate in that. And I'll also tell you to how to find um, topics related to your fields um, using research gaps and how to find them. Um, so that will be a part of it. It's going to be a very extensive one. Um, Fatma, what you have to do to submit in journals is that you have to uh, find the journal that you want to publish in and then you have to read the guidelines for that. Um, I'm going to address this question in the workshop in detail. We're going to open uh, different journals. We're going to go and see their requirements and their formatting and their output style. So it's going to be very, very detailed as well as how to write for that. So we'll try to write a um, dummy paper within that workshop uh, that would comply by all the requirements within the paper and then uh, tell you how to submit that, how to create accounts. Um, so I'll walk you through all the processes. Um, yes, Rabia, this is one of my um, passions. I mean, people who know me personally, they know that I'm very I'm passionate about um, the research work and finding the ultimate truth in our field and actually making a difference in other people's lives. Um, I mean, we do that on a daily basis when we interact with people, with our students, our peers. But basing our opinions and our um, endeavors in facts and in uh, that are that are data driven, that is what actually changes societies. So once we do that, um, this is going to be a huge service for humanity and eternity. So you have to publish original research without plagiarism and a lot of input and depth um, in international journals where people actually see um, the quality work from developing countries. Um, it's very encouraging that you know more and more people are getting interested in research they're learning different tools and they're uh, spreading their knowledge and this is why um, I have been requested by many of my students to create these workshops um, other than that I only would supervise my own students and uh, people who would contact me but you know the demand is so big that we have international participants now and um, this is the first workshop that actually we created in English before that we um, had that in Urdu but you know there's so many people from all over the world who want to join. Uh, we also want to make sure that as our class is not big enough so I can give the individual uh, attention to all of you and answer your questions. But uh, we're soon going to be organizing open events like Facebook Live so that you know uh, we can have different people tune in um, and ask uh, questions um, and then we can create different workshops also. But the most important thing in life for any researcher is the ultimate and stubborn pursuit of truth, Rabia. Um, I personally believe that um, if you are very obstinate and headstrong person with strong convictions, you have to look for the truth, regardless if that's 
beneficial for you or not, whether people like it or not, whether society appreciates it or not, the truth is independent of other people's opinions. Truth is something that sets us free. And that's what a good researcher should always aim for. I mean, this is unfortunate these days that um, so many researchers are actually um, making research uh, political and uh, motivated by personal interest. But research um, by itself is the pursuit of truth. And that's, this is the reason of human existence, to find out what's truth and solve the most challenging problems around us um, through rigorous scientific methods. Uh, which are data driven and everyone can see that and that's peer reviewed research if we don't have this there is no purpose of doing research i mean you can have a doctorate you can have a piece of paper but then if you are not contributing in society in meaningful ways there is no purpose that you are serving so instead of uh, focusing i'm not saying that p-values um, are wrong things you can calculate all the p-values in your research but you have to create real human value around in your surroundings and in your environment and make sure that you change um, humanity for better. So are there any other questions before we conclude? Uh, Rabia, that actually depends on a researcher's field. Um, most fields that are more natural sciences like medicine and chemistry and biology and physics and statistics, these are more number-oriented fields in which uh, most of the data is statistically driven. Um, so the need for quantitative analysis is big in the, those fields. In social sciences, um, they have an additional problem of quantifying the abstract constructs. I explained that in my last workshop also that how do you actually measure uh, feelings like anger, depression, embarrassment, um, exasperation, excitement, love, hate. So these are the things that you have to be very smart about measuring so you this is why we use scales to actually measure these feelings and then we run quantitative analysis on these uh, scales and uh, the degree of uh, intense um, intensity of these feelings and then you have to run quantitative analysis on that so uh, social science is a little bit harder in which you have to solve real life uh, social problems in hard sciences uh, it's a bit easier and this is why you know um, Hard sciences um, have a higher rate of publications and you know, the journals have uh, more output, but that doesn't mean that you know, it's not as, uh, social sciences are not as impactful as um, hard sciences. So everyone has its own place um, in life. So you know, whatever your field is, make sure that you excel in that, make sure you have a difference. You know, always aim high in life. So if you want to do something, do it, in a proper manner, you know, be passionate about that. Um, this is why I have created this personality test um, that you all know, in which, which is based on the big five personality model that I use with my students also. You know, try to find your gift in life. You know, everyone has a certain gift and passion in life. Try to explore that. Um, so if you're a good painter, you know, paint something. If you are a good musician, sing something. You don't all have to become doctors and engineers. Um, this is one problem in one problem in our Eastern society is that you know you have no respect um, unless you are a doctor or an engineer. You know everyone has an interest, intrinsic human respect and integrity. So whatever gifts you are born with, use it and be passionate about that. And this test actually helps people discover themselves. So discover yourself and you know be passionate about that. There's much to contribute um, in society by all kinds of people. Uh, the skin, if you want to buy NVivo, just let me know. Um, I have reseller um, accounts. Um, so, you know, we can split the cost and I can tell you um, the licenses and everything. So you can contact me in private for that.
All right. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for today. I hope for this. Uh, I hope this workshop has been helpful in clarifying your concepts and um, give you some ideas about uh, your own research and how to take it forward. Uh, if there is anything that you need in your uh, personal research, um, I would be more than happy to help you. Um, we also have Osama. He can coordinate with you. Uh, about my times. Um, I've been very busy with supervising and PhD um, students and also other um, online um, research endeavors as well as writing research papers. I've been collaborating with some American universities in writing papers. But even with that, you know, it's um, I feel very happy when I'm contacted by different people. I would love to help you in your own research and make sure that your research is of international quality and then you are published. Uh, if there is one person who's going to be extremely happy the day that you get published, that's going to be me. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions um, and um, wish you a very happy upcoming Eid and uh, hope you're going to be fine and we'll see you soon.